It's senior day in Statesboro, Georgia. One final chance for the Eagles to get a home win in 2017. Meantime, after last week's upset of Arkansas State, South Alabama's bowl hopes are still very much alive as we welcome you to Paulson Stadium for some... And Gavin Patterson will kick things off for the Jaguars. Miles Campbell, one of the eight seniors in uniform for the Eagles today, takes the opening kickoff. And Campbell is going to be dropped at the 19-yard line. And that's where the Eagles will go on offense for the first time today. South Carolina, Newberry High School. He's averaging... 60.9 yards per game rushing, which is number six in the conference. 86 yards passing per game. He's completed 58% of his passes. And he will line up outside, and L.A. Ramsby will line up in the Wildcat, the senior running back for the Eagles to take this first snap of the game. So Ramsby out of the Wildcat, going to keep it himself, and Ramsby is going to pick up about 10 yards on the play. Letting you know that, setting that tempo that you might see anything, uh, unusual play to start the game off, but not something that uh, throws this offense off at all. And so now Demarcus Godfrey and Miles Campbell, two of the seniors on this team, line up as backs behind Wirtz. Wirtz is going to keep rather than pitch, and Wirtz picks. And, yes, you're going to have to beat them into filling that 0-9. They're going to come out with all the wrinkles today. Demarcus Godfrey gets the handoff, and Godfrey is close to a first down at the For over 300 yards. So they know how to get the job done. And Wesley Fields gets his first carry of the ball game, and Fields is up to the 44-yard line. Into the game, two backs that really haven't met their potential. Years uh, before this, they've played great. This year, not so well. Good to see them already in the mix. Keeper by Wirtz, and Wirtz is going to go down at the line of scrimmage. Nothing doing right there. Fifth in the conference in total defense. Wirtz going to roll out to his right now and throw on the run and incomplete at the 42-yard line. Five yards of total offense per game, and that is dead last in the conference. A couple of years ago, they averaged more rushing yards per game than that number. They were in the 300 range rushing. Just not been a good season for them offensively. Wirtz back to pass, going to throw it deep. Got a man out there, and Malik Henry comes up with the catch. Inside the 10-yard line, they're still wrestling for the ball down on the field, but Malik Henry makes the catch. Shy works on the move. His best throws come on the move, taking the hit. Uh, kind of losing the ball there at first is Malik Henry, but able to find it in the sun to make the big catch. And then L.A. Bransby with the carry inside the four-yard line and down to the one. That was a 51-yard pass completion from Wirtz to Henry. And this is the tempo that Georgia Southern likes to go. After any play, they like to get to the ball and get the next one in. Ramsby going to carry it in for the touchdown, or did he? Still no sign. Now they raise the hands. Touchdown, L.A. Ramsby. And the Georgia Southern Eagles have taken the early lead. Formation that I'm quite sure the O-line doesn't like <laughs> to have to run. <laughs> Very creative uh, in the field goal protection. Tyler Bass on for the PAT. And he gets it up and in. So Bass. Turnovers, but trust me, they're going to give a great effort today to win this game. Tyler Bass with the line drive kickoff going to be taken by Baker at the three-yard line. Kawan Baker up to the 24 and no more. Dexter Carter making the tackle for Georgia Southern. And that's where the Jaguars will go on offense for the first time. Offense for the first time today. Coming off that upset win against Arkansas State last Saturday night. And Cole Garvin, a career night passing the ball. Starts at quarterback again for the Jags today. Bounces off the hands of his A-back, Sam Harris. And that's incomplete. Second down coming. 43 yards passing. And a couple of touchdowns in that win last week against the Red Wolves. Handoff goes to Trey Minter. And Minter, five interceptions. He's completed 55% of his passes. It's third down now for the Jags downfield. And off the hands of their intended target, Sam Harris. 52 and 48 his record. 
Corliss Waitman, one of the best punters in the Sun Belt, booms it away. Miles Campbell calls fair catch and makes it at the... Campbell, the fifth year senior, five coaches in this time here at Georgia Southern. Big play possibility. And Bull Barge on the other side for South Alabama. What a perfect name for a middle linebacker. Yeah. Bull, 5'8", his coach say, on his tallest day. But he can make big plays even at short stature. Yeah, the defensive coordinator, Kane Womack, says he's got his, his, the, the best instincts of anybody he's ever coached with a guy playing inside the box. He's just a real tackle machine coming off a career-high 13 tackles last week against Arkansas State and earning Sunbelt Defensive Player of the Week honor. Sent on their third downs this season, but that number has actually gone up as the season has gone on. Fields is not going to get the first down right there, however, as he gets stopped after just a one-yard gain, and it's going to bring up... And play the percentages, but when you're 0-9, you, you have to try to send the sentiment to your team that we came here to win. This is one of those kind of plays. Let's see if they actually snap it. They do. Wirtz going to run option here and pick up the first down. Shy Wirtz out to the 50-yard line as Wirtz picks up 10 yards on fourth down and one. Quarterback, when he leaves here, uh, making a big run right there, letting the team know we came here to win. We might, we're pulling out all the stops today. Wirtz was going to run option to the outside, and a flag goes down. By the way, on that offensive line today, the right tackle, Drew Wilson. False start. Offense, number 21. Five-yard penalty, first down. That's Wesley Fields, the false start on him. Number 61, Drew Wilson, the right tackle, was considered questionable. They were going to wait and see how he did in pregame warm-ups. Apparently okay, because he's out there starting at right tackle right now. Should take a look at our officiating crew with Jason Autry, the referee, leading the way. So first and 15 now with the ball at the 45. Wirtz going to fire out of the gun, incomplete. DeAndre Glenn, second down and 15, ball at the 45. Quick pass out to Wesley Kennedy, and Kennedy going to pick up about three and a half yards on the play. Up. But you do have the athletes that can make up with that with their playmaking ability. Third down and 11. Wirtz has a pocket, stands in there, intercepted at the 50-yard line and then dropped. <laughs> Khalil McNover margin in the conference. Sam Harris standing deep for the Jaguars. Going to come up to get this one at the 22 yard and ever in three ball games. If we can go down there and take care of business this weekend, we'll have a shot at a bowl game next game in our final game at New Mexico State. The hard win to get into a bowl, trying to go on the road uh, against an opponent you haven't beat. Uh, two games back to back on the road. Ball is fumbled into the hands of Deshaun Cooper, and he's inside the 10 yard line. They tried to run a jet sweep, handoff to Jamarius Way, who fumbled it right into the hands of the. Money on the spot is Deshaun Cooper. That's a miscue right there on the handoff. Ball pops right into his hands, and the big fella rumbling, trying to get to the end zone, protecting the ball on his way. Second fumble recovery. Formation with works flexed out to the right. We saw Cato Brown warming up, maybe uh, expecting to go in. But right now, staying with the flow and the personnel who's been hot so far in this game. And a timeout is going to be called. Timeout. South Alabama. By First South start, Alabama. After they lined up in the Wildcat, the back is flexed out to the outside. And again, L.A. Ramsby lines up in the Wildcat for the Eagles. Ramsby going to keep it, keep it and follow his blockers. And Ramsby kicks to the outside and still on his feet. Cuts to the defense. What a run by and a 14 nothing lead for the Georgia Southern Eagles after eight have we seen a team score a big touchdown then get the celebration penalty and then it turns into a short drive touchdown for the other team we'll see if the Eagles can avoid that and Baker will take it at the 10 yard line Kawan Baker Oh, my goodness, met head on at the 29-yard line by Dexter Carter, their special teams demon, who's scored a touchdown on a kickoff this season. 29-yard line, their first two possessions have not gone well. They've run four plays for three and out, and then they fumbled the next play. Cole Garvin going to go to the air. It's caught by Jamarius Way at the 35-yard line. He's also the one who fumbled that jet sweep. 
So they go right back to him after he made that big mistake. Second down and four. They throw it over here to Sam Harris with some blockers. Harris has the first down and more. Sam Harris out across the 40-yard line and down to the 42, down to the 38 part. But he's a lot tougher and faster than a lot of people think. I think he showed you that right there. Quarterback sack back at the 47-yard line. Well, he never did. He stayed on this side, on the left side of the field and just came off the on corner for the sack. They spotted at the 45, second down and 18. Garvin, here comes the blitz right up the middle, throwing incomplete. And that really wasn't a linebacker blitz. That was the defensive end twisting around and coming through a hole in the middle of the... Why not deal up these kind of blitzes? Third down. Garvin, pocket being pushed, ball popped up into the air, dangerously close to another interception. Is by me. So Waitman, who is number two in the conference, averaging over 45 yards per punt, end over end kick. Miles Campbell calls fair catch and makes it at the five yard line over his right shoulder. And that's where the Eagles will go on offense with five minutes and. Sportsman like conduct, kicking team number nine, receiving team, excuse me, number 29, receiving team number 37. The penalties offset first down. So, unsportsmanlike penalties, one on each team, so really has no net effect on where the ball is going to be. App State. And Chad Lunsford told us this week, hey, look, both these quarterbacks are going to play. We just got to commit to doing it. And so, here on their third full series, they bring in Cato Brown. Campbell goes in motion, and he's going to hand off to Wesley Fields, and Wesley Fields up to the 14-yard line. He got eight on the play. Switching quarterbacks can, can be a great advantage, and it can hurt your team sometimes based on the, the production of both quarterbacks. But when you switch up, the defense doesn't know the second quarterback just as well as he know the first one. Fields picks up the first down across the 20-yard line as Bull Barge hit him. Have to make a little quick adjustment because even who he likes to pitch, how long he likes to hold the ball, affects how they're going to play defense. Cato Brown running option here, going to keep it instead of pitching, and Cato Brown picks up about a half yard on that play. And he's been in the system longer, which gives him advantage in passing the ball. Wesley Fields picks up just a couple of yards on the play that time. Zach Beffert seems to be into this challenge of winning a game. Garrett goes in motion, handoff goes to Ramsby. He's got the first down. Ramsby up to the 30, 30 yards for the season, 394 yards coming in. Brown going to pass it, throws under pressure, and it's caught downfield by the tight end Richardson. Ellis Richardson with just his fourth catch of the season, a big gainer down to the 17-yard line. Richardson. First and 10 from the 17. Cato Brown, the keeper, lots of room to run inside the 10 yard line and down to the seven before finally being tackled by Nigel Lawrence. Second down and one with Wirtz back in there in the shotgun. He hands off to Wesley Fields. Fields trying to get to the edge, and he will, and score the touchdown. A flag down on the field, however. Well, apparently not. Personal foul, illegal hands to the face. Defense number 98. How about that? 20 to nothing, Georgia Southern. Result. Clicking today like, well, they haven't seen the entire season. <laughs> PAT by Tyler Bass, and it's to give myself a chance to get on top of a live ball. Instead, they boot it through the back of the end zone, which, hey, they bring it out to the 25-yard line, but I've never under Xavier Johnson. Garvin throws off the hands of his target out there. Sam Harris. Catching the ball, just losing his focus. Mentor goes in motion. Here comes a heavy rush on the edge. And the ball off the hands of Jamarius Way and Monquavian Brinson, who has really developed into one of the top corners in this league, slings him to the ground, and it's going to be third down. Pent up frustration today on both sides of the ball. Third down and 10. Garvin fires to the outside, and it's caught out there at the 33. And the Jags line up the punt again. 
Corliss Waitman, we mentioned his 45.3 yards per kick. He's 41.6 on his net, which means hardly any returns at all. That's number two in the conference, and Miles Campbell has to go all the way back, and it hits on the ground, and a fortunate back. And Cato Brown will stay in there at quarterback as they start at the 20-yard line, leading by three touchdowns. Keeper by Cato Brown. And Cato Brown runs into his own man and still picks up the first down at the 32-yard. Hurt himself running into his own man or when he was tackled on the play because Shy Wirtz comes in at quarterback. Nothing doing for Ramspeed that time. That's the first time that the Jags have been able to blow up a play as Daryl Sanji makes the tackle for a loss. Right shoulder or somewhere along his right arm. We'll try to get a status report on him as we can. Second down and 13. Time for Wurtz. Now he's scrambling. Middleton had him. A flag goes down. We might have a face mask. And now Wurtz improvising in the open field. Going to be tackled at the 30-yard line which was the line of scrimmage, but we might have a face mask right here as Middleton was going for the sack, might have snagged a piece of that face mask. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. And that's exactly what it's going to be, a 15. Over on the sideline right now, getting checked out. So first and 10, ball at the 45-yard line now for the Eagles. Eight seconds to play in the quarter. And Wirtz going to keep it and sprint to the outside. And Wirtz across the 50. And Wirtz picks up another eight and a half yards on the play. Tackled by Malcolm Bugs on the final play of the first quarter. So we played 15 minutes. The Eagles could not have scripted this first quarter any best first victory today as the Eagles head coach 0-3 with losses against Troy. Georgia State and App State. A lot of speculation as to who the next head coach of the Georgia Southern Eagles might be. Lunsford has been told that he'll be given an opportunity if things go well here in his stint as the interim head coach. Pass is thrown complete on the sideline to Anderson, and Anderson is down to the 19-yard line, and that's a first down for the Eagles. How Anderson with just his fourth catch. Well, here they have a 21-0 lead as we are just underway in the second quarter. Wesley Fields with the carry and nine there with Kennesaw State. But when you look at Coach Lonsford, he's been here nine years. He has his team today playing with a lot of energy. They put a lot of energy into that Georgia State game. So he at least emotionally has this team charged. The ball is fast-paced, and it's a lot of energy showing that they want to win. Toss goes to Fields. Got a blocker out there, and Alexander... The tight end. Those in the L.A. Ramsey, we're used to seeing. Ramsby, touchdown, his third touchdown of the game. How about that? L.A. Ramsby stretches out over the goal line and is 27 to nothing. Want to see. This play is going to be under review to see if his knee was on the ground before the ball crossed the plane of the goal. And they might bring this one back out. It, it looks like right here at the end as he's, he tries to stretch out, okay. which is hard to do. Watch where the ball is when the knee hits the ground. Scored. <laughs> After further review, the ruling is the runner was down one foot short of the goal line, third down. So 21 to nothing there to try to ram it in. Keeper by Wirtz, and Ramsby trying to push him in. He dives over and gets the touchdown. Second effort, Shai Wirtz diving over with his back parallel to the ground. Gets it across, and now it is 27 to nothing. A little push. 271 yards of offense for the Eagles here in the first 17 minutes of this game. That's nearly as much as they've averaged for a full 60 minutes, and it's now 28 to nothing. Mexico State, they're going to have to really rally the troops. The good news for the Jaguars is there's still plenty of football left to play. Kickoff from Bass will not be returned, so the Jags will start at the 25-yard line. Coach Jones and his staff knew when they... We'll see how that impacts their team. Cole Garvin stays in there at quarterback. A heavy rush and fires. It's broken up again. Vildor right there in Jamarius Way's face. They can't. They're wide receivers. Catchable balls that just have not been made. Garvin fires and right there to Harris at the 33-yard line. Freeman gets him on the ground. That's a close to one on the season, which is tops on this team. 
On third down, Garvin goes and incomplete again. A ball again in the hands of the wide receiver, Malik Stanley. He's willing to stick those hands and arms in there to break up the pass. Heavy rush, Waitman gets rid of it. Campbell has it hit on the ground and takes it on the hop. He called a fair catch, and so he grabs it and stops it at the 24-yard line. Time out. And that's where the Eagles will go back on offense with a 28 to nothing lead here on their home turn. ...on them, and that's what's really doing them in. They're running it perfectly and eating up a lot of clock and keeping them on the field. Cato Brown at quarterback, running option, and Cato Brown going to get cut down at the 28-yard line. Keeper, Cato Brown to the outside, and Brown is going to be stopped at the 31-32 yard. Brown, they're both getting to the end of the line, very clean and a lot of room to make decisions. Kane Womack said that the Jags defense really had to set the edges and contain the perimeter. That time they force Cato Brown to cut. Ball was pitched. This will be the second punt of the afternoon for Matt Flynn. You see Sam Harris looking into the sun. And they're going to run it on the fake, and they're not going to get it. Well, you're always the end zone. Time running off the play clock here, and they finally snap it. And Garvin's going to run it right up the middle. And Garvin dives forward to the fifth. I'm trying to get this team back in this game. So first and 10 from the 15-yard line. Carlos Robinson in there at running back, and he'll take the handoff, and Robinson going to be put on the ground by Big Darius Sapp. Game goes down, out, throughout the game, but big play right there by Sapp. One of the eight seniors in the lineup today. They go for the end zone, a jump ball out there, and incomplete, it's broken up. Malik Stanley was the target, and again, Monquavian Brinson on the coverage. I really like what... Alabama... It seems like a gamble, but at this point in this game, you, you got to make something happen with this kind of field position. Garvin drops it off for Mector, and he gets upended by Monquavian Brinson again. Brinson's already broken up three passes today, and wow, what a play by Brinson on third down, and the Jags going for it, down 28 to nothing. Garvin goes to the end zone, incomplete. McCrary was the target. Freeman on the coverage. Ball goes over on that. You see the time of possession over 15 minutes for the Eagles in this game. Monteo Garrett. Chasing Milner hitting Garrett. And Fields are the running backs right now for Shy Wirtz. Keeper by Wirtz has an option to pitch and doesn't. Stays on his feet after taking a glancing blow and then finally run down from behind by Reeves at the 26-yard line, but that'll pick up the end ball at the 26. I tell you what, if the Eagles get one of their patented drives cranked up here, the Jags might not touch the ball again in this half. Wirtz going to keep it across the 30-35 and up to the 40-yard line. And that was a nice tackle right there. Yeah, Wirtz, we do know he has great speed for a quarterback out on the edge. And right here, he's about to go start running. And out of nowhere, Daniels come in. One man to beat right there was Wirtz. Wesley Fields, Sanji in on that tackle. Get it back. Defense coordinator for South Alabama, Kane Wilmack, talked about playing physical. But when you're on the field a long time against an option offense, it's, it's draining on the body. Long toss goes to Fields, and Fields up to the 48-yard line. Zach Beffert in on that. Shy Wirtz is at his best out on the edge. Let's see what him and L.A. Ramsey can pull off. Ball at the 48-yard line. Ramsby, this time he gets tackled for a loss. Ryland to look into the sun. He averages just under seven yards per punt return. Flynn averages just over 40 yards per kick. This is a high, booming kick that's going to sail into the end zone for a touchback, or touchback, pardon me, and so the Jaguars will have it at the 20-yard line for Georgia Southern. Cole Garvin sails it out of bounds. Jamarius Way was his intended target. Tamarcio Reese, the Jags played here in 2015. The Eagles beat them 55-17. to Toss goes to Trey Minter, and Minter... Still on his feet, scrambles up to the 24-yard line. Lane Ecton, the linebacker. Nine jerseys headed to the ball. Wayne, you got to believe that a 28-0 lead 
for the offense has been a great confidence builder for the defense. <laughs> they haven't been able to play like this all season long. Heavy rush, Garvin stands in there, delivers to McCray, and McCray is going to pick up the first down at the 32-yard line. Heavy <laughs> rush ball game in pretty short order. Garvin fires downfield, off the hands again. Your focus is kind of off. Uh, this defense is playing with a lot of energy for Georgia Southern, making it hard for Cole Garvin. Garvin going to keep it himself and tumble down at the 38-yard line. He's well short of the first down, but they cut it in half. Get yardage. Jags are 0 for 5 on third down in this game. Garvin now scrambling, spinning, and firing again off the hands of Trey Mentor. That would have been a first down. Sean Cooper covering out the big defensive catches on 19 targets in this game. They've caught about 33% of the passes that have been thrown to them. Waitman, a high kick. Campbell calls fair catch and makes it at the 24-yard line. So Shy Words goes back out there at quarterback for Georgia Southern. They have 226 to work with in all three timeouts remaining. So plenty of time to get more points on the board here even for an option offense. Wirtz, scrambling, he's going to take off and run, and then he's going to get leveled. Comes with it disadvantages, especially with passes in the middle of the field. It's hard to find your receiver. Second down and 10. Eagles taking plenty of time here at the line of scrimmage. You can see the design on their helmet today. It's Veterans Military Day here at uh, Paulson Stadium, so honoring veterans. Monteo Garrett with the toss, and Garrett up to the 39-yard line. <laughs> Driven out of bounds. So easy getting out on the edge of this South Alabama defense. Big runs for Georgia Southern all day. Word's going to go to the air, and it's caught by Richardson. <laughs> Ellis Richardson. Quarterback at Alabama State before transferring to Georgia Southern. Wirtz run an option and nice tackle by Bull Barge at the 40-yard line to get him on the ground. Wirtz is able to pick up timeout. four on the play. Clock stopped at 116 after very all, very few negative plays we've seen by Georgia. Yeah, Southern. they're already 54 yards above their per game total offense oh, average. Oh. Wirtz going for the end zone, got a man out there, and Kennedy can't run under it. That was Ryan Mills, the corner running step for step with him in coverage. And now it's going to be third down. And Wirtz throwing it out there. Give your receiver a chance. Taking the hit. Giving him a chance. Just not enough real estate to be able to pull that one in as Kennedy. Great effort by Wesley Kennedy. Third down and six from the 36 with a minute and nine seconds to play in the half. Option run, Wirtz tosses to Fields on the short side. He's out of bounds at the 30-yard line. And he's going to be close. Depends upon the spot here. The quarterback aren't having to negotiate anyone. They're best able to run up field cleanly. Wirtz has time, dances around, and now takes off and run. And he gets dropped at the 30 and a half yard line. Jimmy Gibson there to make that tackle along Time with Tyree out. Turner. So second down and 11, ball at the 30 yard line. Eagles doing this with a backup at right tackle right now. Parker Williams instead of Drew Wilton in there at that right tackle position. Wirtz going to the air and it's caught inside the five and then drop. Malik Henry was sitting there waiting on it. And then it got busted up to play here in the first half. Heavy rush, Wirtz gets out of it and runs up to the 25 to 24, and Reeves came up and put a lick on him at the 24-yard line. We'll see if Wirtz is okay and see if the Eagles take a timeout here. The clock is still running, and Reeves is the guy that shins. When the clock is running again, let's see if the Eagles burn a timeout here. They have one left. They're going to run it all the way down, I believe, and then use a timeout before trying a long field goal, and they spin timeout. the timeout Georgia with three seconds. So Georgia Southern going to line up and try a 41-yard field goal right here by Ty. And hopefully I didn't just jinx him by saying all that. Let's see if the kick got through those uprights. It did. 41-yard kick by Tyler Bass on the final play of the first half. And what a half it was for Georgia Southern.
A lot of pinup frustration for the 0-9 Georgia Southern Eagles, and they let it all loose on South Alabama in those first two quarters. A 31 to nothing lead for Georgia Southern as they roll up 361 yards of offense to the Jaguars 72 and LA Ramsby took it in for a couple of touchdowns as well. It's been a great senior day for the Eagles. 31 nothing here at halftime. By the Eagles in the first 30 minutes. And a lot of times the numbers don't tell the story. These numbers tell the story. Being able to run this option and dominate running the ball has Georgia Southern's offense been. And defensively, uh, they have just pent this team. A lot of three and outs for South Alabama. A lot of dominance on both sides of the ball. Up for the whole season, but a, a good way to try to finish this thing out. And you mentioned that the pressure was all on Georgia Southern today in your mind, and they have responded. Ball is batted up into the air, and it ends up falling incomplete as Tamarcio Reese, the linebacker, was battling Sam Harris for the loose ball. Well, the one thing about being any kind of athlete on any kind of level, something like that, you are going to remember that probably more than you would ever remember any winning season. Garvin goes to the air on the outside. McCray with the catch, and he's tackled out. Uh, which is not a bad receiving core of South Alabama. Third down, and the ball in the air. Way has it broken up again, and there's Vildor. Mark, man, because once enough, the other corner gets a lot of attention. That means they're going to get a lot of balls to me, and Vildor is showing that he's ready. Waitman stands at his 23 to kick, and the left footer, uh, left footer booms it out of there. Campbell calls a fair catch. It hits on the ground and takes a bounce for the Jags, and it's covered by Campbell. Game has ever had as they started it from scratch. But will this be his final season as the Jags head coach? The toss goes to the outside, and Miles Campbell races up to the 38-yard line and picks up the first down. Mark Mashad, the big wide receiver out on the edge, blocking. But once again, is on that list is the tight end Richardson with 68 yards receiving in this game on two catches. Words dives up to the 44 and a half yard. The Georgia Southern team that you've been accustomed to seeing the previous three years in the Sun Belt. Words running pitch to the outside and keeps it instead across the 40, across the 30, and Words. Finally on the ground at the 15-yard line as he nearly broke it all the way. Malcolm Buggs and Darian Mills making the tackle way downfield, but a huge gainer for Shy Wirtz as he's lined up and ready to snap it again. And I know it's all about the, the last 40 yards of this run, but it all starts with how clean they're getting to the edge. No quarterback is even having really to negotiate. They're negotiating safeties and corners, not defensive ends or linebackers. That was a rushing game in his redshirt freshman season. Handoff goes to Ramsby, and Ramsby rams his way in. Justin Colbrook, Rainey, they're holding their own. They're knocking people off the ball. And when you can have the kind hmm. of runners that they have in the backfield, Trying to really take advantage of this great field position and put the great, uh, a beautiful drive here of executing the option. Wirtz rolling, throwing, and it's caught inside the one yard line, and that is a touchdown. Malik Henry with the catch, and then he spun and got the ball. Henry, he had only three catches in his career coming into this season. Catches the ball clean right there, sticks it out. Ball already secured catch. Nothing I see right there, Matt, to change it from being a touchdown. Once again, both feet are in. You look for that first. He secures the catch. He controls the ball. He's putting the ball across. Ball doesn't come out of his hand until it hits the ground. Nothing from our angle that says that's not a touchdown. The ruling of a touchdown is confirmed. He expanded. As has this Georgia Southern lead. Now 38 to nothing. Unbelievable. Really no real big penalties other than the celebration by L.A. Ramsby. You haven't seen the ball dropped or fumbled. It's just been the execution. Administered by Georgia Southern. Handoff goes to Trey Mentor, and Mentor 
Gains just a couple of yards on the play. De La Ro and also give their defense uh, some type of a break. Second down and seven. Play action. Garvin loads up and wants to fire deep. Delivers downfield, and it's incomplete. And a flag is out. Malik Stanley was the target. And we're going to have flag gutsiest performance they'd ever had there. are there multiple fouls the on the play. Personal foul, roughing the passer, low hit on the quarterback, defense number 33. That penalty is declined. Pass interference, defense number four. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, Reese was called for the roughing the passer, Brinson for the pass interference, so that'll... And Vildor have been tight all day. They, there's very little room for these receivers to catch the ball, and you have to live with some of those sometimes of pass interference with that kind of coverage. No running room for Carlos Robin, or playing, I should say, at left guard. Way goes in motion. They hand off to him. Jamarius Way gets tackled by Ecton at the 49-yard line. Barry. Been a, a, a great shutout by this secondary so far. Way, three touches, just 10 yards today. He's been a non-factor. They'll swing the ball out there to Carlos Robinson, and that's another drop for the Jaguars. In South Alabama now, one for nine on third down today. 33 reason. But you can't do anything without the ball, Matt. You got to catch the ball first. Seven pass receptions, 23 targets today. A lot of drops for the Jaguars. Unexcusable amount of drops. Waitman punts. Campbell calls fair catch. Makes it in traffic at the 13-yard line. A four-way tie for first place in the conference with two weeks left in the regular season. Troy, Georgia State, App State, and Arkansas State would all be 5-1. and one. Cato Brown in there, quarterback for the Eagles, and he gets wrapped up and dropped by Daryl Sanji. Throughout their careers at South Alabama. So second down from the 14-yard line. Cato Brown going to fire out this way. It's complete to Wesley Fields, and Fields out of bounds. Riley Cole nicked him just enough to drive him beyond the boundary. Brown looks to the other side, now dances, going to run straight up the middle. Brown makes a cut and gets up to the 25-yard line and picks up the first. These two quarterbacks are more of running quarterbacks. They really run to get the first down and run hard. This is what the folks here in Statesboro envisioned from this offense all season long. They finally put it together here in their final home game of the year. Monteo Garrett on the carry, and he gets slammed to the ground by Derek. Famous actor played easy e and straight out of compton downfield they go and it's going to be caught by anderson at the 30 yard line everything they do today is working kato brown out of the two court along with consistent and efficient option reads by these quarterbacks that was a 44 yard pickup ramsby comes to the near side and finally picks a hole to dive for catches for 71 and it starts with the first play of the game It's one of those game plans where everybody's going to be in it no telling where we're going to go with the ball whatever film you watch does not help you game plan for a team that is desperate for a win they run a reverse to Miles Campbell and Jeremy Reeves <laughs> apparently read out that he'll bring the lumber from that standpoint, you can see him playing in the NFL. Cato Brown back to pass. Here comes a heavy rush. They throw it to Fields. Fields makes a cut. Gets by a man inside the 10. Fields down to the end zone and scores. Ball drops out afterwards. But that's a touchdown for Wesley Fields. Yards now for the Eagles. They've nearly doubled their per game total offense average here today. We still have another. The only thing we know about this Georgia Southern team is they're 0-9 on paper, but they're not 0-9 in talent. It's not that there's a lack of talent here that puts them at 0-9. And this kick will be non-returnable. And I don't, there's no question about that. You know, Wayne, every coach, and this is the fifth Georgia Southern game today. It has woken up and taken over this uh, South Alabama team in ways that it can't recover from. Garvin fires in the middle of the field. That's complete to Jalen Wayne, the freshman, and Wayne across the 50-yard line and all the way down to the 41. Jalen Wayne, who is a freshman wide receiver, that they moved to running back this week. 
you, this team, the first time they've really crossed the 50 without a penalty all day, uh, is just trying to execute and get some good feeling and good vibe. I don't know where Jalen Wayne's been all season because he's a good-looking guy at 6'2", 210. Man, he's, he's kind of rocked up, isn't he? <laughs> he looked good on that catch and run. Offense, number 57, five-yard penalty, first down. I, I tell you, Matt, to echo your sentiment. Freshman. And now he lines up in the slot. Heavy rush, Garmin going to go back to Jalen Wayne. Wayne got hit right away by... Joshua Moon two today on 8 of 25 and a lot of drops by his targets heavy rush Bradley hits Garvin as he delivers downfield and again Garvin takes a shot he might sue for non-support I mean he and he's gonna run right through him third down 18 drops for the Jags today and again Garvin has to get rid of it. It's turned into a dumpster fire for South Alabama. Everything that could go right for Georgia Southern has, in large part because they've made it go right, and the exact opposite, the vice versa for South Alabama today. Ball hits, kicks, and was it saved by South Alabama? Looks like we're going to have a touchback. Matt, I think you. Oh, they're going to spot it at the one. Okay, I, they did get it down. I think Alabama. So the Eagles at their one-yard line. Works in there at quarterback. Just going to run off of tackle and pick up about four yards on the play. So second down and four. It's got to be more than that. That's what it clocks read, but that's not right. We're going to cut back, and he's going to take a loss back at the one-and-a-half-yard line as Vanessa Middleton made the tackle. I'm sorry, it was second down and eight, and now it's going to be 13. He's accounted for two touchdowns, one running, one passing. As Cato Brown comes in, it's third down. Enough punt to at least get the ball at midfield. Samori Collier is now deep at the 46-yard line. And Flynn punting for the third time out of the back of his end zone. They come after it. He gets out of there. He gets it out of there. And Collier calls a fair catch. Did he touch that thing? The ball's still kicking around. And down at the 46-yard line, apparently he didn't. So the Jags will get it there at the 36. The Eagles thought that he'd reached out there and actually touched that thing. It was coming. That's why the Jags take over at the 32. Garmin going to the airway is there. Jump ball. And... It's intercepted by Vildor. And when you look at this play by Kendall Vildor, him and Marquavian Brinson, they have been there all day long, even with the one or two completions that Garvin has been able to complete right here, just finding the ball, going up to his highest point, and fighting for it to get it out of the receiver's hands is Vildor. Yeah, Vildor solo tackles. Really strong day by these Georgia Southern corners that knew they were going to be challenged by Jamarius Way, and they have shut him down, and he's been a non-factor today. Fields on the carry. Picks up uh, maybe a yard on the play. Sanji was in on that tackle for South Alabama. Long toss goes to Fields, got a block out there, and Fields still moving out across the 30 to the 31-32. Barge in on that tackle, along with Nigel. Kennedy on the pitch out in space, able to make people miss to pick up that first down. Pass goes to Kennedy this time, and he's going to be dropped right away. Keeps moving, though, and Shy Words, who was shaken up just a moment ago, back in there at quarterback. He throws short to Wesley Kennedy, who picked it up, and apparently... That was a live ball. I'm happy to get a win, too, here in game number 10. And he's been here longer than anybody else on this coaching staff. He's in his ninth year, two separate stints here with the Eagles. His ninth year, he worked with four different head coaches and finally got a chance to be the interim. Wirtz takes a shot as he fires to Kennedy over on the far sideline. And let's see if Wirtz is okay. Southern football is supposed to be about and that was one of the reasons why they elected to make him the interim head coach because he's been here longer than anybody else. And he knows, like I said, what Georgia Southern football is supposed to look like. Big, pit, big punt right there by Matt Flynn. 
He's one of the eight seniors. Didn't go how they wanted here at Georgia Southern this year, but this win uh, shows a lot of heart and a lot of pride. Dallas Davis now in there at quarterback for South Alabama. He delivers a strike to Jamarius Way, who was tackled at the 18-yard line. The bulk of last season, he and Cole Garvin have kind of rotated in the starting job here this season. Pass is complete at the 30-yard line as they get receivers at last count. I think we said 18 or 19 drops by his intended targets today. Right up the middle, Dallas Davis on the run to the four. End up being a 500 team, if not worse, and that's what South Alabama has shown today. Davis to the air, and it's picked at the 48-yard line. Brinson might take it back all the way. Still on his feet, the 20, the 10, and Brinson down inside the five of the four. did receive they've always been blanketed right there just finally I'm gonna jump this time get in between the receiver and the ball and right here at the end once again that extra effort shows how Georgia Southern came in and got this score to 45 to zero fourth interception of the season for Brinson now Cato Brown under center Kennedy goes in motion. Cato Brown going to keep it himself, and he dives down to the one-yard line. It's a barge hit him in the backfield. Historic moment here for Georgia Southern, especially after going 0-9. They just made it 51 to nothing. Demarcus Godfrey, the fifth-year senior, gets in on the touchdowns. Beat them 55 to 17 last year. And it's now 51 to nothing this year. And when I mean last year, the last time they played here in 2015. Wow. So they've outscored them. 106. Eagles now six for six scoring in the red zone here today. It's 52 to nothing. 52 to nothing lead still with 11 and a half minutes left in this game. Let me correct myself. The stats just updated. 544 total yards for Jordan. Was the emotion of trying to get that first win, gain a little bit of redemption this season. Was that bigger than trying to get a win? And even for the coaching staff, nobody wants that part of their bio. We do have Wikipedia now, <laughs> so nobody wants to see that in their page of an 0 and a 12 season. Well, they won't have to see it here for Georgia Southern. Davis fumbles the ball. It's still loose down there, and I think he got on top of it. The game against New Hampshire was supposed to be their home opener back in September. They had to move it to Legion Field because of the hurricane, and that was just the, the start of what turned out to be still have 11 minutes to go. I, can't, I think we can say enough precincts have reported. We can <laughs> declare a winner in this one. Play again gets blown dead. Georgia Southern has two more games remaining. Both of them will be on the road. Ball start. Offense, number 57. Five-yard penalty, third down. December 2nd. This loss here today guarantees they cannot become bowl eligible. Heavy rush as Davis stands in and delivers downfield to Jameer Taylor, who makes. So first and 10 from the 25 yard line. Pass to the edge and that's complete to way and Vildor shoves him out of bounds. His pass is complete. So second down now. Davis fires, adds complete. That'll be a first down. That's caught by David Gardner. Other scores, 20 to 7 lead on New Mexico State. That's uh, six minutes gone in the second quarter. Idaho leading Coastal Carolina 7 0. That's in the second quarter out at the Kibbe Dome. Pass thrown complete. Man, what a shot put on Gardner at the 44 yard line by one of the seniors, Chris. Uh, As the coaches always love to tell you, Right here, not on my watch, will you be making big plays at Acton. 
A lot of hitting been going on by Georgia Southern. A lot of great tackling as well. When they get to guys today, they've been going down. Long toss goes to Mentor and not going to get to the edge. Joshua Moon tackles him for the loss back at the 40-yard line. Thank you, Joshua, for making me sound like I know what I'm talking about. Right there, is, it shows you these players, even when they're coming loss against Auburn. Davis fires and catches made at the 43-yard line. 44-and-a-half-yard average for Waitman. Campbell runs away from it. It's going to hit at the one and kick into the end zone out of bounds. Freedom charges for a photo shoot. <laughs> as much as his handler charges. <laughs> LeBaron Anthony now in there at quarterback, the third teamer for the Eagles, getting a chance to play here. Tosses the ball to Monteo Garrett. He stepped out of bounds at about the 27-yard line. So the offense here in the fourth quarter. Handoff goes to Demarcus Godfrey, and he scrambles forward to the 39-yard line. Then he fumbled at the end of the play. Did he get back on top of it? He took a big hit at the end of the play by Nigel Lawrence, and the ball popped in. Doing the smart thing, watching the clock, just taking his time. Handoff goes to Garrett. Garrett up to the 42-yard line. They could finish strong. Well, this will be a win here and make his record one and three with two more to go. And I'd say the way they're playing here today, two winnable games for them. Big run right there. George Johnson getting it. And sometimes keeping that coach builds on that momentum. So first and 10, ball is at the 43-yard line. Handoff goes to Godfrey, and Godfrey yeah, runs off tackle and picks up maybe one yard. And uh, as we pointed out, I mean, he came in, took the job. He lost to Troy, lost to Wins. I think there might be some momentum for Chad Lunsford in the coaching search. We'll wait and see what happens. And certainly, I'm not saying he should or should not get it. nominee that goes to one of the nation's uh, top assistant coaches after he was coaching special teams last year, a, a unit that blocked seven kicks. They had Young Wei Koo, one of the top kickers in the country, now with land on his feet, no doubt about it. And I know somewhere uh, he's keeping up with his score, and he's happy to see these Georgia Southern Eagles finally pick up a win here tonight. Fair catch is called for and made. 183 yards of total offense, 356 on the ground, 39 minutes time of possession and have that one off year uh, we see a lot of programs like a, the Miami Hurricanes bouncing back mm -hmm. real quick because they're known for being a good team and sometimes you just fall into a little drought and like I said this is the the fifth game out of ten that I've called here for the Georgia Southern Eagles on ESPN this season and had a chance to maybe put some of that hurt away with a big win And that should be the final play. Those runs are giving the, the ice. The Gatorade or is just water now that they're pouring on the coaches. But I'm quite sure he's enjoying every minute of it. Whatever it was, I know it felt good for Chad Lunsford. <laughs> on senior day, Georgia Southern finally breaks through and gets their first win of the year with a 52 to nothing route of South Alabama. Now one and five in the Sun Belt. They'll pull into a 10th place tie with Texas State. And Chad Lunsford, who stayed positive throughout in very difficult circumstances, he's had a message of positivity. He's got a big smile on his face. In a, a beautiful, dominant game by Georgia Southern. Each phase can, can go into the meeting Monday and feel great that they contributed offensive and defensively. The old-fashioned blocking and tackling type victory.
And that's his athletic director, Tom Kleinlein, out there to shake hands with him on the field. And that's a good picture for the both of them. Big smiles on their faces, slaps on the back. Georgia Southern gets to go into the Thanksgiving week holiday with a big 52 to nothing victory over South Alabama here this afternoon. Shy Wirtz, 107 passing, 113 rushing, involved in a couple of touchdowns here today as Georgia Southern built a 31 to nothing halftime lead and rolled on to their first big victory of the season. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live on the ESPN app. To watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, you can log on to watchespn.com or you can download the Watch ESPN app. Georgia Southern now 1-9 and nine on the season, 1-5 and five in the conference. They're at Louisiana next Saturday. South Alabama falls to four and seven overall and three and four in the conference. And now for Wayne Gandy and the entire ESPN team. I'm Matt Stewart. Good night from Statesboro, Georgia, where the Eagles finally break through with a big 52 to nothing victory over South Alabama. This has been a presentation of ESPN.